racing and music go together like fire and ice. Countless musical performances at racetracks to even some singers and musicians stepping behind the wheel. And while many know of pop singer Pitbull as the co-owner of Trackhouse Racing in the NASCAR Cup Series, many people forget that a rock and roll legend did the same thing in the Arca Series in early 2003. In early February 2003, right at the beginning of Daytona Speed Weeks, rock and roll icon Alice Cooper surprised everyone in the Daytona International Speedway Media Center when he popped out of Chase Montgomery's number 27 car, with a special Alice Cooper paint scheme to go along with it. Cooper jokingly stated that he had been in there for nine hours. Cooper would go on to announce a partnership with Montgomery Motorsports and driver Chase Montgomery and select ARCA and Bush Series races in 2003. Cooper would join in as a marketing partner and co-owner of the organization, and the team would rebrand as Alice Cooper Montgomery Motorsports, running the number 27 for the select races in which they were running in compliance with Chase Montgomery's Bush ride with Bruco Motorsports. Cooper's co-ownership of Bruco Motorsports involved the races that Cooper was sponsoring himself, and the other races, Montgomery would have to find his own funding. At the time, Montgomery was scheduled to do the entire season, but yet had not found the funding for all 35 races. The first race was the 2003 Advanced Auto Parts Discount 300 ARCA race, where Montgomery, running an X-Cup car Pontiac, supporting Black with Flames, was running a strong all weekend, practicing in the top 10 and qualifying an impressive third. Montgomery was a powerhouse, ran inside the top five the entire race and climbed to the lead on lap 55. Surviving multiple restarts, he managed to stay ahead of everyone and hold on to win his first career ARCA race in just his 29th career start. Four laps left. Lights off top the pace car. The pace car heads to pit road. Oh, we got trouble already in the back. There's a little smoke coming out. Guys trying to check each other on this restart. Here we go. Green flag in the air. Chase Montgomery followed by straight Venturini and Seeger. Chase Montgomery got another really good restart right there. But I say this again, if those guys get lined up on him, it could hurt him if they catch him in the right place. Should make it where they're going to be faster and be able to get around him if he doesn't throw the big block on him. All those cars behind Montgomery gathering momentum, and we're going to see how this high-stakes poker game plays out. We got one group of cars trying to hunt the bottom of the racetrack and stay in line. We got a few of them back here further back. We're trying to go to the outside and pass Gerhardt's up ahead. He's coming. Bobby Gerhardt, early leader. He's coming back up through the pack. Bobby Gerhardt all the way back up into the top 15. Can 19 year old Chase Montgomery hold off the veterans behind him? Doing a great job right now, but Bob Strait's got a pretty good run up off of turn two right there with Billy Venturini right in behind him. Billy Venturini also trying to nail down his first victory. It's Montgomery straight in the 66, Venturini in the 25. Seegers just behind them in the 04. Montgomery leads the field down off of turn four, headed to the start finish line. White flag is in the air, two and a half miles between Chase Montgomery and the checkered flag. Single file, nose to tail, right behind him. Bob straight in the 66, Venturini in the 25. Montgomery trying to seal the deal for his first career win. When do they have to make their move, Jeff? I'd have been trying to make mine off of turn two if I'd been him, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Chase Montgomery has got a strong hot rod right there. 
Everybody's holding a straight line right now. Bobby Gerhardt went to the outside back in the back. We're going to pick up a couple more positions before the end of the day, but not enough to win the race. Here we go, Jeff. Coming down off four, Montgomery with the lead. Looking good. Straight Looking right good. behind him. And Chase Montgomery wins for the first time in 29 ARCA Remax Series starts. The 19-year-old from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Oh, we got trouble right there going into turn one right there. Got a couple. Chase Montgomery holding up that finger for his first career ARCA Remax Series victory. And we'll meet, there's Alice Cooper. We'll meet him huh? when we He's talk back. Let's go down to victory lane. Chase Montgomery about to receive his honors. And Chase Montgomery, his new Alice Cooper fire suit, climbs out a first time ARCA Series winner. And what better place to do it than here at Daytona in the biggest race of the year. 19. some of the biggest names in the sport. Chase, congratulations. What a big win. We did it. We did it. This is this guy. These, these guys are the ones that did it. This is their race. What I were you thinking having all those guys in your mirror? Oh, God, I don't know. I just put it on the floor and I never looked back. Oh, wow, this is awesome. And talk about what a big association with Alice Cooper. Greg, Oh, that's awesome. This is a way to kick it off. We, uh, <laughs> this first race with him. Come here, Alice. Come on in, Alice. All right. Woo! <laughs> we did it. We did it. This is a, this is the start of this team. Uh, we're going to win some more. Well, you knew this kid had potential, but boy, what a way to come out of the box. Unbelievable. I said, let, it, let him go. Just let him do it. <laughs> well, how'd you get involved in this? Oh, they just got in touch with me in Phoenix, and I said, Any, anybody 19 years old that can hold 100, 800 horsepower, let him go. <laughs> what a way to pull off the big win right here at Daytona. First time ever today. Would... It was an emotional moment for everyone. Cooper would go on to say in an interview, it was my first race, first win. Chase did a hell of a job. Cooper jokingly went on to say, when I was 19, I thought I was indestructible. But these guys who race today, they're gladiators. They go out on track and they become monsters. Being the ultimate showman, Cooper said he'd done some crazy things in his life, but racing a car at 190 miles per hour wasn't one of them. I've put my head in a guillotine, wrapped a Boeing constrictor around my neck, but I wouldn't get out on track and race these cars. Montgomery chimed in as well saying, I've owned an Alice Cooper CD prior to the deal and thought it was pretty cool, but I think I've worn out his new CD by now. Cooper jokingly said, I'm trying to see if I can get him to wear my makeup at the next race. Also saying, I'm going to retire now undefeated. Chase has threatened me to stuff me in the trunk to the next race to make sure I make it. At the end, Cooper and Montgomery agreed winning his first race was like Alice getting his first number one record. You can't really explain the feeling. It just low-key happens. Following this successful ARCA win, the Bush Series race at Daytona was also a success for Montgomery, as he would go on to get his first Bush Series top 10 finish, finishing 10th after starting 27th. Outside of Daytona, however, the results weren't the same for Alice Cooper Montgomery Motorsports. On the ARCA side, the team attempted only three more races with the partnership, resulting in disappointing run of 23rd at Atlanta due to a mechanical issue, 25th at Nashville due to multiple green flag pit stops, and 31st at Kentucky due to an engine failure. While on the Bush Series side, the results were mixed. 36th at Las Vegas due to an engine issue, 22nd at Bristol after crashing early but getting back out on track, 12th at Texas, 13th at Talladega, and 39th at Nashville with an engine failure that would result in a crash as well. Following the ARCA race at Kentucky and the Bush race at Fontana, it's unclear whether the partnership with Cooper was still together, as Alex Cooper Montgomery Motorsports took a hiatus from both ARCA and the Bush Series, and Montgomery's deal in the Bush Series was scrapped as Joey Clanton took over his 27 ride. Montgomery's team would return at the July Daytona race, but the site of the team's first ARCA win, but this time listed under Montgomery Racing, and not the Alice Cooper Montgomery Racing moniker. 
The team showed up with the number 80, still running the same Alice Cooper themed paint scheme they were running during the partnership, though this time Cooper's face was not on the car, nor any mention of Cooper was on the broadcast. Montgomery would make the race, start 24th, but was involved in a crash on lap 189 and finish 37th. Following this race, another hiatus took place for Montgomery, who eventually returned to Bruco in the 27 car for the final seven races, and two more ARCA races later in the year as well. But the Cooper partnership had dissolved by this point. It's unclear why, but poor results are likely to blame. The signature Cooper scheme came back for one more time at the fall race at Salem, again without Cooper's face itself on the car. Montgomery would end up on his roof after a violent crash, finishing 17th and also having a poor performance at Talladega the next week. Though running the same car that they were running at Daytona, the car would eventually have a mechanical issue resulting in another disappointing finish. And on the Bush Series side, he would only master a best of 26 at Memphis. With all cars getting torn up on the Arca side and poor results, on the Bush Series side, he was let go at the end of 2003 from Bruco Motorsports. After the 2003 shutdown of his ARCA team and his Bush Series hopes, Chase Montgomery would move over to the Truck Series, running both full-time in 2004 and 2005, but with mediocre results at best, scoring no top 10 finishes. Montgomery would make his final NASCAR start in early 2006, and hasn't raced in NASCAR sanctioned series since. But Montgomery himself still races in his local divisions in his home state of Tennessee from time to time, even to this day. Alice Cooper, who was still an avid racing fan to this day, would never sponsor another race car ever again, though he would crusade some other famous rock stars into sponsoring stock cars in the future. Alice Cooper Montgomery Motorsports is a team that most fans have forgotten about. Was it ahead of its time? We don't know. But it's a fun story that many old school ARCA fans and NASCAR fans still love to bring up from time to time whenever the ARCA series at Daytona race gets talked about. This past February marked 20 years since Cooper and Montgomery's infamous Daytona win and likely a moment seeing a rookie race car driver with a legendary rock star holding the winner's trophy in victory lane, we might not ever see that again. It's a great story and we only wish that it continued for a lot longer. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. If you enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you all real soon again. Thanks and goodbye.